Hi guys, it's Navin here. Welcome to Elfie's World. That's Selfie. And who is Selfie? I will tell you guys in the next video. Not this video. In this video, we're going to talk about first frozen man in Australia. It means Australia put their first man into frozen. Like how we see in all space movies, they put the man or the man or woman, whatever it is. All right now they got so many things we don't want to go deep into that so they put their first human into frozen world what is it like we see in the space movies they put the people into sleep and then they wake them up after hundreds of years so that's what happened in australia so let's deep dive into the topic and see what's going on In the annals of science and the extremes of hope, Australia etched its name in 2017 with the cryonic preservation of its first citizen. This wasn't a scene from a futuristic film, but a testament to the burgeoning field of cryonics. An 81-year-old woman, her identity shrouded in privacy, became Australia's pioneer in the quest for a second chance at life. Driven by the belief that today's medical limitations might be tomorrow's breakthroughs, her family chose to preserve her in a frozen state. Their hope? That future science could reanimate her, curing her ailments and gifting her more time. This singular event, though shrouded in technical jargon and medical complexities, boils down to a simple, profound human desire to cheat death. It's a gamble, a leap of faith into the icy abyss of the unknown. Yet, for some, it represents a beacon of hope in the face of the inevitable. This first Australian case threw open the doors to a fascinating world of cryonics, prompting us to explore its intricacies and implications. The journey into cryopreservation begins at the precipice of life and death, immediately after legal death is declared. Time is of the essence. The body is cooled, slowing down metabolic processes and minimizing cellular damage. This initial cooling often takes place in a specialized cool room, where ice packs and cooling blankets are employed to bring down the body temperature gradually. The next step is the replacement of bodily fluids with a cryoprotective agent, a type of human antifreeze that prevents ice crystal formation. These crystals are the enemy of cryopreservation, as they can pierce and damage cells, rendering them beyond repair. The process is delicate, requiring surgical precision and a deep understanding of human anatomy. Once the cryoprotectant has permeated the body, the temperature is lowered further, this time to cryogenic levels. This is usually achieved through a controlled rate freezing process using liquid nitrogen. The body, encased in a specialized sleeping bag-like container, is slowly lowered into a cryogenic storage tank filled with liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. Here, suspended in a state of suspended animation, they await the advancements of science. At its core, cryonics is a testament to the enduring human spirit, a refusal to accept the finality of death. It's fueled by the belief that what we perceive as death today might be reversible in the future. The promise of cryonics lies in the potential of future technology. Imagine a future where nanotechnology can repair cellular damage, where diseases are easily treatable, and where aging itself is reversible. This hopeful vision paints a future where those cryopreserved are brought back to life, not just revived, but restored to health and vitality. They would awaken in a world vastly different from the one they left behind, a world brimming with possibilities and second chances. For the individuals cryopreserved and their loved ones, it's a gamble on the future, a bet that science will find a way. However, cryonics is not without its critics. Many argue that the technology is too speculative, that the damage inflicted during the process might be irreversible, and that the ethical and societal implications haven't been fully explored. These concerns are valid and highlight the need for continued research, open dialogue, and a cautious approach to this complex issue. The world's reaction to cryonics has been a mixed bag of curiosity, skepticism, and outright dismissal. In countries like the United States and Russia, cryonics has gained a foothold with established facilities and a growing number of people opting for cryopreservation. However, in many other parts of the world, including much of Europe, Cryonics remains a fringe concept, often viewed with suspicion or even outright hostility. Legal and ethical frameworks surrounding cryonics are still in their infancy, varying considerably from country to country. 
some nations lack specific legislation governing cryonics, leading to uncertainty and potential legal challenges. Others have outright banned the practice, deeming it unethical or scientifically unfounded. This global divide highlights the need for international dialogue and collaboration. Open discussions about the scientific, ethical, and legal aspects of cryonics are crucial in navigating this uncharted territory. As science progresses and our understanding of life and death evolves, it's imperative that we engage in thoughtful and informed discussions about the possibilities and implications of cryonics. Oh, are we finished? Okay. <clears throat> so, the video you just watched, fully generated by AI in one single plate. I'll put the link down in the description if you guys want to make use of that same AI. And also, okay, cut that. And comment down below what kind of topics that you guys would like to see that me talking. And also, I have another YouTube channel that coming, and it's going to be in another language, in Tamil. So I will put the link for that YouTube channel as well. Make sure go and subscribe, and share to any of your Tamil friends if you guys have any friends. Hope you guys do. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye from Navin and Elfisbo.